Gavin Syme here, and on today's video, I want to share something really important. It was about five years ago. It's been a long time that my mentor, Ken Whitmire, passed away. And I'm going to link a video to a memorial video I did for him with a little bit of that story in, in the comments, in the notes. But it got me thinking about Ken and kind of reminiscing and looking at photos and more importantly, thinking about some of the most important things that I've learned in photography, specifically from Ken Whitmire, who was incredibly awarded photographer. He was known for his portraits. He did large wall pieces, but he was also super known for his wildlife. He's like, you name it, you name it. Ken was a master at it. And his awards uh, could have probably filled this office. And he was a legend. He was like the Ansel Adams of, of color, of the portrait, of kind of the modern times. Now I can reminisce, and I'm gonna do that a little bit, but I actually want to come over here and I want to show you guys this lesson. When I started back when, I actually started when I was 12 years old. Okay, so that's going way back. Actually, I started when I was seven. I bought a camera at a yard sale and then I lost interest for a while because I didn't have a lot of money to develop film. And I got serious when I was about 12 years old. I'm going to embarrass myself just a little bit. If we actually go back to some of the early photos I did, they, they were just not good photos. I, I didn't really understand light. I didn't have vision. And so there was the beginning of this journey early on in my first few years. And I would just take photos. But they were no better than a crappy snapshot on a cell phone. And the problem is that I didn't understand light and how light flows and what makes it all tick. And so this, this is an early Photoshop composite experiment. I don't even remember. This was probably like Photoshop 4 or something. Uh, but some of these are just terrible. Some of them are, well, so I did try and do actually some creative things. Sometimes I did things that were, were kind of creative, even if they weren't very good. But what I'm getting at here is I worked hard. And when I came back and you fast forward and I'm not as young as I look here. I was probably 25 here in this photo. And yes, I still have that tripod. It's that Enduro tripod and it's a beast, but it's still kicking. All right. So when you think about the concepts of photography, what, what makes us great photographers and my work with Ken. I remember when I first met Ken, I went to a conference. This isn't something I've admitted to. Well, I don't know if I've ever admitted this in a video. I went to a state conference, but it was international PPA level competition at that conference. And I was doing HDR and doing some creative stuff. And I was doing weddings and portraits. And I had the Pro Photo Show podcast and all this stuff going on. And I thought it was pretty hot stuff. And I was, I was a decent photographer and I was learning. But it was here that was the problem because... I thought I was better than I was. And I entered this competition and I thought, oh, I'm just gonna knock their socks off, right? I'm just gonna blow these guys away with how I understand HDR and digital and all this stuff, right? And it was like, wah, 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 wah. I was so pissed. I was so pissed that, that I didn't do amazing. And, and in retrospect, considering my age, I didn't actually do bad. I got a few decent scores because the images in these level of competitions at the state level were scored uh, to 100. So it was like 64 to 100 or, or something. Nothing was a zero, of course, but 100 was like the perfect image. And Ken always said there wasn't 100. I remember years later when I was actually judging competition, uh, people debating for 100. And I'd always remember Kim would be like, no, uh, it, there's never perfect. There's always a way to make it better. We're always learning. There's not 100 because 100 would be perfect. Now, many, many competition judges would dispute that. That's fine. But it always stuck with me. I remember at this competition being kind of annoyed, but trying to network, trying to improve my game, trying to learn still, right? But I was still, I had a big head and I really, it was a humbling moment for me. It was a humbling week at this conference because my images didn't wow people nearly as much as I thought they would. And maybe you've had a similar experience at some point. And Ken is scurrying around this conference. And 
he's promoting his wall portrait conference. And I went on to go to that conference and he, he was convincing me to spend a thousand dollars and he was walking around giving brochures and everybody knew Ken, he was a legend and he had this annual week long workshop that he did in the summer. It cost about a thousand dollars and that was a lot. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I'd never done anything like that. I'd never gone to photo school. I had never done anything at that level. You know, sure, I bought classes and workshops. I, I thought when I was young, well, maybe I'll go to Brooks or something like that, and I never did. And I was glad I didn't because a traditional schooling environment wasn't what I needed. I needed to get creative and practice and learn. But I, I want to make an important point. Just because you don't go to film school or photo school doesn't mean you shouldn't go to get educated. I think one of the best ways to learn is to go to workshops, sometimes expensive ones, with people that actually have credibility. You know, not just not just internet marketing uh, hyperbole, but real experts. And then find the ones you connect with, network and mentor. And that's how I got Ken Whitmire as a mentor, because he convinced me to go to this workshop. And the first year I went, I got to tell you, the first year I went, again, I was struggling with thinking I was all that. And so I was annoying. And I, I was, I've all, I'm always, you know I'm kind of annoying. All right. I mean, I'm a kind of guy that questions things. I fight for things. I'm very passionate. And so the first year I went, like the people that had been going their years and the teachers, they were kind of thought I was an annoying kid because I would question and challenge everything, which can be a good habit, but I didn't necessarily know how to manage that. And so I had a little bit of a reputation for being the big mouth. And so the next year I was better. The next year I actually improved a lot. I was studying with Ken. The next year I was teaching at the conference. Ken taught me that you're always a student. And I, I'm not trying to ramble and just do reminiscing. I'm actually going somewhere with today's video. Ken taught me that we're always a student. But he didn't just say it, he did it. Ken would sit in my classes at his own conference and listen to me teach things that I was good at, right? I may not have been the best marketer, but I was, I was really... I was really on top of it with things like Photoshop, like Lightroom. I was starting to make tools and presets and actions, and I was always experimenting and trying to up my game. Just like today, as I'm making you know black and white conversion packs like Silver and Blackroom, like the new natural HDR pack, everything I'm doing, even though I'm selling things, I'm actually doing it as my own creative process. I'm using the tools that I make and then I'm trying to share them with other people, just like when I make these videos. And I, I hope that comes across. Sure, I'm trying to make a living. Sure, I, I love it when you guys support me and buy my stuff, but I love photography and improving photography. And Ken would sit and he would ask questions of me and all the other instructors, and he was 83, 84 years old. He had more awards than any of us could ever hope to have. And he was still studying. And that always stuck with me. But I think perhaps one of the most important things, we would go out and there would be these workshops and you know, Cam would be shooting and teaching, there would be different instructors and we'd be talking about the concepts of shooting, but a lot of his classes were the concepts of selling, the concepts of raising our game in presentation, uh, how, to, how to put images on walls. And that became the emphasis in, in most of these classes. And then as time went on, I would go out and we would have uh, do things with Ken. I would go to shoot to them. There would be sometimes just me with him, sometimes in groups. I remember this time we went to the beach. This is a, a photo that's fairly well known that I took of Ken and he, where we nearly got killed in the middle of the night because an elk ran out in front of this little, little car that he would drive. And so there was a lot of adventures. And if you've ever had a mentor that really, really knew their stuff and really inspired you, you, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. And Ken even taught me to ski, and I, I suck at it, but, uh, but that was a fun day. What I'm getting at here is that learning is one of the most important things we can do. If you're watching this video right now, and by the way, if, if you like this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe. If you want more, head over to my site, join my newsletter over at simefx.com. But videos like this, right, as content creators, I'll tell you a secret. And my channel is not very big. This channel is not very big on my photography. But content creators on YouTube, we're always competing with all the other images right here on the screen, right? All the other videos that are popping up and, and trying to grab your attention. So we have to try to get headline and we have to try and hook you, right? And get you to listen. 
and say, oh, this one secret will change your photography forever. Workshops and deeper classes, even deeper video classes, which I buy sometimes, you know, I have classes like Exposed and like Photo Perfect that came about because of studying with Ken, because of studying film, because of studying darkroom, because of studying wall portraits, because sometimes one little line, one tip, when you take it to heart can change everything about your photography. And so a little video like this one can change a lot of things, but we don't want to neglect the longer form right? The full classes, the workshops, the mentors, the going out and, and being with people. That's why, that's why I still make and sell workshops like Photo Perfect to understand composition and line and tone, like Exposed to understand light. And I think those things are important. That's why I would just go to classes and workshops and listen to other photographers because Ken taught me that we have to be students if we're going to master that. Over time, my photos got a lot better and the improvements got better, and I actually started, you know, being able to win at competition, and over the years got my master's degree for winning enough competitions, for getting enough organic merits, and a lot of that was because of, of Ken. In fact, Ken passed away just a couple months before I received my master's, and it was him that was going to put it over my neck uh, at, at the international conference that year. But here's the, here's, here's the thing. I told you the story. I've given you a little bit of my backstory and how I actually uh, sometimes still do suck, but I sucked a lot more back then. And you've heard me say it. It's that tone is the least utilized and least understood factor in photography. And I know you've heard me say it if you watch my channels, if you watch my workshops, but don't turn off this video just yet. Because letting that sink in and realizing as painters of light, right? I go back to my first images and I hadn't looked at some of these in years. And I was like, oh, are you serious, Gavin? You took these? Ugh. But you know what? It's those first images that taught me that something was wrong. And then as I progressed in that and I realized, oh no, I need to do more. They need to be more spectacular, but I still didn't know exactly why. I knew when I got a better image and a worse image. I knew if I had dynamic range and light, I knew that if I, if I mastered the technology better and produced better results, I knew I could improve by knowing what was happening, by experimenting with prints and presentation and, and, and tools, right? That would, would make our work different, but that wasn't enough. It's normally, in my case, printing larger than this, but I've been having fun with some of these little Polaroid Instax and Kodak mini retros and all that kind of stuff. We're all thinking, oh, we're photographers. We make stuff with light and, the, and then and tone, right? And then Ken tells me tone is the thing that no one understands. It's the least used, the least utilized, and the least used tool. And from that understanding, when I realized that, that's when I started studying zones. That's when I made the exposed workshop and continued expanding on that. And I'm still processing all of that today because when you go out on the street, when I go out and do street photography, I actually am doing a study of, in my mind of trying to understand better what's tone doing. That's why I like switching over to black and white and shooting in black and white on the streets because I'm seeing the separation, the lines and the contrasts of that tone. And when you understand that you're probably not using tone, you're not utilizing it as much as you should, the way light makes patterns, the way it shines on objects, on people, the way the background is separated from the foreground to create three-dimensional feeling in your images, when you understand that tone is the factor. And when I say tone, I don't just mean turning the light on or off. I mean how it's shaping, right? Even how, even how the light is shaping my face right now and how moving it in different places changes that perspective. If you've made it this far, you probably are getting this. You probably already knew this before you started, but I wanted to iterate it in words of one of the most important tips that my mentor ever taught me. And it's tone is the least utilized. And we have to be constantly reminding ourselves to utilize the tone, the light and the dark. Don't be afraid of the blacks. Don't be afraid of the whites. Don't be afraid of the in-betweens, but don't push everything into the in-betweens. You, if you watch my recent video on my new natural HDR, you know it's all about getting dynamic range without crushing into the midtones. Silver presets, black room, 
I'm always pushing, use blacks, use blacks. These are concepts I, that I didn't just come up with making presets, experimenting in Capture One and Lightroom. I learned these things because it stemmed from that, from understanding that we need to understand tone because it's the tone, the separation of light and dark that allows us to create images that have depth, that have atmosphere, and ultimately that help us tell a better story. Yes, there's line and space and composition, and we talk about those too, but tone is the least understood factor. And if you start thinking that way and realizing or reminding yourself of that, it's gonna change the way. I just wanted to tell you a little bit of my story and how I got here, guys, because I don't know if I've ever done a video on it. And I wanted to remember Ken a little bit today because it's just past five years since he passed away. And I wanted to share some of that. I'm gonna link a video to Ken that you should check out in, in the comments of the video, in the, in the info of the video. But hey, I hope you guys like this one. Let me know what you wanna see here on the channel and we will keep making and keep exploring.